Continuing on with our pre-cal review of these parametric equations, here's an example that says find the points of intersection of the curve with parametric equations x equal 2t minus 1 and y equal t squared and the straight line y equals 3x minus 2. So we want the points of intersection. Now be very careful because it's our habit a lot of times to just find the x-coordinate of things. And this didn't say find the x-coordinate, it said find the points of intersection. So we need to make sure we're able to do that. Now here's a set of parametric equations that we have already eliminated the parameter to. So this will not be that difficult. But that's the first step, is I'm going to eliminate the parameter, taking the step-by-step -step process of taking one of the functions and putting t in terms of that variable, and then substituting that into the other parametric equation every time I see a t. So here's one Cartesian curve. Here's a straight line, and we want to know the points of intersection. Well, two things intersect when they equal each other, so I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to set it equal to the other equation, because if y equals this and y equals that, then those two things need to equal each other. I'll factor my 1 fourth out front here, and that leaves me with an x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 3x minus 2. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 12x minus 8. Gather like terms, subtract 12x from both sides, sub, uh, sorry, add 8 to both sides. So this factors to x minus 9 and x minus 1. So there are my x coordinates. The x coordinates are the points where those two functions intersect are x equal 1 and x equal 9. So I can go back to either one, either this function or this function, and plug those x values in and find the corresponding y values for those x values. So there's 1, and then if I plug in the other x value, that would give me 25. So the points of intersection are the points 1, 1, and the points 9, 25. All right, so sometimes they can ask you to do things without overtly saying eliminate the parameter or find the Cartesian equation, but you can understand from the information that's given that that's what they want you to do. And they definitely could ask you to do that, let's say, as part A of a free response question. So let's bring calculus to this party finally. So now we have a rudimentary understanding of parametric equations. We could work with them algebraically. Now we're going to bring calculus to the party. So when they ask for the slope of a curve that's given to you as x equals some function in t and y equals some function in t, and then they ask for the slope of the tangent line at a given t value, they're asking for dy dx. They're not asking for dy dt or dx dt. Okay, The slope of a parametrized curve is dy dx. And it turns out that dy dt, and I want us to think about this, if y equals g of t is the vertical behavior of some object or particle, then dy dt is the vertical change that's going on. Here's the vertical change that's happening to whatever this object or this particle is that's traveling in the plane. Correspondingly, dx dt, not surprisingly, is the horizontal change. So intuitively, we go back to pre-algebra where we learned that the slope of the tangent line, for us knowing calculus, we know that's dy dx, it's just rise over run. And for parametric curves, the rise is the rate at which the y function is changing with respect to t, and the run is the rate at which the x function is changing with respect to t. So even algebraically, 
We know if dy dx is dy dt over dx dt, we find the derivative of the y function with respect to t, the derivative of the x function with respect to t. This is the horizontal behavior. Then algebraically, if we treat this as if they were fractions, it would make sense that we could cancel out the dt on the top and the dt on the bottom, and we would be left with dy dx. So there are multiple things going on here, but fundamentally, this is what needs to go in your notes. And you need to recognize that all that's happening here is what we intuitively already know about the slope of the tangent line, and that's rise over run. So finding the derivative, or the slope of the tangent line, or the rate at which something is changing when we're given parametric curves is really straightforward. It's the change in y over the change in x. So given y equals g of t, then we put g prime of t over f prime of t. So really easy calculus on these functions. So let's work an example. The tangent at the point p11 to the curve x equals 1 over t, y equals t squared. So they want us to find the equation of the tangent line at point p. This is something, remember me telling you, they're going to ask you to do over and over and over again. In any context they can put you in, with any type of function they can give you, they're going to ask you to find the equation of the tangent line. So we just learned that dy dx, which is the slope of the tangent line, is dy dt over dx dt, and we want the point 1, 1. So remember, for the equation of any line, we need a point and we need a slope. For the equation of the tangent line, we need to make sure the slope is the derivative at that point. And we need to make sure, and it will be, that this is the point of tangency. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our y function. If y equals t squared, then dy dt, the derivative of y with respect to t, is just 2t. So there's our numerator, 2t. If x equals 1 over t, then dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to t, is negative 1 over t squared. So we'll put that here. Now we could clean that up. This is 2t over 1 over negative 1 over t squared. So we flip the bottom and multiply straight across. And we're going to wind up with negative 2t cubed. So there is dy dx. There is our slope. But notice that our slope is in terms of t. And now we're after y minus y1 equals dy dx. That's got to be a number. It cannot be an equation times x minus x1. So we have x1 and y1. We have dy dx, but we have dy dx in terms of t. And we need a number, and we don't have a t value. How could we find a t value? Well, remember, here is an x and y value, and here is a relationship between x and t, and a relationship between y and t. It does not matter which one of these functions you use. It matters not. Just pick one of them and set your equation equal to that. If x equals 1 over t, then at x equal 1, we should have 1 equal 1 over t. And therefore, we know t equals 1. Now, if you want to make sure that that's the truth, then when y equals 1, we'll just back it up and make sure we get the same thing here t could equal plus or minus 1. So there are actually two y values, but the one x value that works for us is positive 1. So when t equals positive 1, and that's what's happening at this point, then our slope is negative 2 times 1 cubed, or negative 2. So the equation of the tangent line is y minus 1 equals negative 2 times the quantity x minus 1. There's the equation of the tangent line. So parametrically, really, the most difficult part is finding the t value that is true for this point. OK, now, the second derivative. The second derivative is not quite as intuitive as the first. It is a three-step process, and I want to make sure that you know all of these steps and that you can apply them step by step by step if you are given parametric curves 
x equals f of t and y equals g of t. If you're given those curves and you're asked about anything that involves the second derivative, whether it is concavity, inflection points, anything like that that involves the second derivative, you're going to need to know how to take the second derivative. Now recognize that your second derivative is just the derivative with respect to x of the first derivative, right? So make sure that you understand that relationship. The very first thing you're going to have to do is find the first derivative. So step one is find dy dt over dx dt. That's step one. We never can get to the second derivative without going to the first, through the first derivative. So the very first thing you're going to do is find the first derivative dy dx. Then you're going to find the derivative of that with respect to t. That's what this numerator is. That's what this notation is. For instance, in the last example, we found that dy dx was negative 2t cubed. So what we would do here is we would take the derivative of that with respect to t. So the numerator here would look like negative 6t squared. Okay, that's what it means, take the derivative of dy dx with respect to t. You're going to have it in terms of t anyway, because you have dy dt over dx dt. The last step, which is not intuitive at all, and I'm not going to go into the mathematics behind it. You're welcome to Google it if you want to. This is one of the few times that I'm just going to say, memorize it and move on. But then the next thing that you would do is just whatever you found dx dt to be right here, when you found dx dt, then you're just going to divide that result that you found in the numerator by dx dt. All right? So that's what we're going to do there. And we found that, I think, to be negative 1 over t squared in that last example. So that gives you an idea. So make sure this three-step process for finding the second derivative for parametric curves is in your notes and that you could apply it. Step 1, find dy dx. Step 2, take the derivative of that with respect to t. Step 3, divide it by dx dt. Simple as that. All right, let's work a couple of examples here. I think we'll be able to get started on this one, but we won't finish it up. So a curve C is defined by the parametric equations x equal t squared and y equal t cubed minus 3t. Part A says, show that C has two tangents at the point 3, 0 and find their equations. Well, if they have two tangents, then I ought to be able to find two t values for dy dx. So dy dx, remember, is dy dt over dx dt. So dy dt is 3t squared minus 3. dx dt is 2t. So I want to show that there are two tangents at the point 3, 0. Now keep in mind you're given, always given, x, y points. That is x of t, y of t, where x of t equals 3 and y of t equals 0. All right, now we could clean this up. We could make this, this is 3 halves t. If I divide both these terms, by 2t, that's 3 halves t here, minus 3 halves t to the negative 1. So there actually is dy dx. And so there are two tangents, there are two values here where the slope equals this. So I'm going to set x equal to 3. And those two values are plus or minus the square roots of 3. I could have used either one of these to find those values, but the two values are where t equals positive root 3 and then again negative root 3. So I'm going to find the slope at positive root 3.